Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today, we are working on game day food. Gonna do some homemade salsa. If you are into chip salsa and guacamole, got some great recipes for you. I just did one on guacamole, so we'll link to that one. This one is for salsa, super easy and simple. Let's dive in. So, in my family, we have people who like really spicy and we have people who prefer mild. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big batch of salsa and then I will split it up into two. I actually have two jar, mason jars. One will be for with jalapenos in it and the other will just be mild. So for your salsa, what you're gonna want, you're gonna want tomatoes. I like to use a blend of tomatoes. I like Roma, I like, these are off the vine. Um, if you have garden fresh tomatoes, I like to use one good juicy beefsteak tomato. Um, tomato season is done for me in my garden, so these are actually store-bought tomatoes. But that's okay, they work just as well. Um, you're going to want some onion. I prefer red onion. You might want to try white onion. You're going to want some lime juice, a little bit of garlic. Gotta have that fresh cilantro. And then of course your spice. Um, and a little bit of salt and pepper as well. So let's just jump in here. Um, some, if you like to do spicy as well, um, you can add a little bit of habanero or hot sauce as well to the spicy version. Uh, when we get to that, I'll go take a look in the fridge and see what we got to throw in there for my husband. So I'm not sure, I actually have more tomatoes in this. I'm not sure quite how many I'm going to use. So I am just gonna go ahead and start cutting them up, put them in my bowl and gauge from there. I actually prefer to do smaller pieces of the tomatoes and the onions. I feel like it's a little bit easier to scoop up with your Tostitos, with your chips. All right, so we have those tomatoes all diced up. They look delicious. Let's go ahead and start adding in some of our other ingredients. I'm gonna start with some onion. Now, adding the rest of your salsa ingredients is really just up to you and to what your family or what your company likes. My family is, well, my kids are a little bit less on the onion and a little bit more on the cilantro. So I'm dicing my onions up extra small. They get noticed less that way. Still add plenty of flavor in there. And that was only about a third of a small red onion, so I'm going to grab another one and cut up a little bit more. Whew, this is a strong onion, let me tell you. What are some of your favorite game day foods? Uh, we like to do barbecued meatballs. We like to do meat and cheese trays, veggie trays. I've got a really yummy fresh dill dip recipe that I like to make for veggies. Chili, of course, is always a favorite. Sometimes, though, I like to make and take um, more comfort food style. Um, like banana bread is always a favorite. Chocolate chip banana bread, kids love it. So if you're gonna have much kids over or where you're going, there's gonna be much kids. That goes over really well. Crock pot mac and cheese is awesome to make. 
hot buffalo chicken dip. That's a good one. All right, I am gonna actually throw this onion in a baggie. Woo, she's making the eyes water. I've tried every trick in the book for not having your eyes water with cutting an onion. I have not found one that works. <laughs> I'm gonna rinse off the cutting board quick. Um, again, so I think in total that was probably about three quarters of a small red onion, which for our version is more than enough. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of garlic. Now, if you don't have actual minced garlic, you can use some garlic powder, a little onion powder. Oh, let's see, I'm gonna do probably, I would say that's probably about two teaspoons of minced garlic there. And add some lime juice. I always start out with a little, come back, add some to flavor. I'm gonna do some fresh cilantro. I'm just gonna pull that right out of there. Bunch it up there so we can chop her up. Again, if you want to, you could use a food processor. I personally just like to dice it up myself. There's something about fresh cilantro. The invigorating makes the whole house smell good. You want to make sure you cut your cilantro up real nice and fine because nobody wants to have big flecks of cilantro. All right, let's add that in. Oh yeah. I also have a really good seafood dip recipe. I might have to make that up for y'all along with the hot buffalo dip. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. Pepper really just brings out the flavor of tomatoes. Salt just adds a little something amazing to it. And as your salsa sits, if you make this the day before or early in the morning, um, the juice of the tomatoes will come out and your salsa will get a little bit uh, juicier. You can even give them tomatoes a little smush down here. Bring out some of that juice, flavor. All right, I'm gonna grab myself a Tostito and let's give this a try. All right, so this tastes pretty good, you guys. Had a little nibble. I feel like the blend and balance is pretty good. I'm gonna add just a little bit more lime juice and then here's some secret ingredients. Maybe you haven't heard of this before, but a splash of white vinegar and a pinch of sugar adds just a little pizzazzle to your salsa. So maybe a fourth a cup, not quite, because it helps with the acidity in your tomatoes um, and your cilantro and the onions. And then I'm just gonna grab a little bit of sugar. Ah, oh, that's too much even. Okay, that should be about right. Mix this together. Let's try another little bite here. See what we think. Tasting is always the essential 
step for cooking. Mmm. It is so good. I actually really want to add a little more lime. We like ours on the limey side. And another dollop, a little bit of salt, another little bit of pepper. All right, so this is perfect for our mild salsa version. So I am going to grab a jar. And I'm going to put, I don't know, about half into here. And this will be for the kids and I. And then I'm actually going to make the spicy version. Get a little bit of the juice. Not all of it, about half of it. All right. Okay, so that is the mild version. Now we need to chop some jalapenos for the spicy one. Okay, so clean off my knife just a little bit here. And now it depends how spicy. Your spicy people like it. Some people like to have the seeds in there because it adds extra heat. But for this one, we're gonna skip the seeds. We like to make nachos in our family. We've done like barbecued pulled pork nachos or chicken nachos um, with like the yellow nacho cheese sauce. And if you have some leftover salsa to get used up, sprinkling that on top is delicious. It's ways to kind of spruce up your nachos. Of course, my kids are picky, so one of them doesn't like nachos because they don't like them in the oven. They just prefer regular old chips and salsa. And then the other one just likes a little bit of taco meat or chicken. Lots of cheese. But I like fully loaded nachos. You gotta add the meat, you gotta add the tomatoes and the onions, peppers. Uh, we like to use uh, tri-colored bell peppers olives black olives are delicious okay so let me grab the bowl here this was one good size jalapeno let's mix that in and i am thinking probably one more will do the trick i really did not need three so let's add this one in
this is the spicy version the homemade salsa two full jalapenos in there i could definitely smell the jalapenos Teddy is going to love this he'll eat that up in one weekend probably between college and nfl games no doubt about it that's not going to last very long i'm going to add this to the other jar Spoon it in. These mason jars work great. Um, my husband will actually, if there's any left over on Monday when he goes back to work, he'll actually just take the jar. And it fits in his lunchbox really well and with the sealed lid will last. So. We're gonna get all that in there. I think it's gonna just fit. Oh yeah. Perfect. Put the lid on there. I'm gonna go grab my marker and write an S on there for spicy. And there we have it. We have mild salsa and jalapeno salsa. Delicious, healthy, perfect game day food. I hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you hit like and subscribe and we'll see y'all next time. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. Today I am making super easy, absolutely delicious uh, appetizer. We're making a seven layer Mexican dip with a few alternative toppings and additions. Uh, this is just a classic uh, game day, watching a football game, having friends over, take it to a holiday get together recipe. I'm actually just making it uh, because we're actually home this weekend. And so I'm sure that the guys will be watching some sports on TV and it's just something fun to have uh, in the fridge for anybody to snack on whenever they want. And so the seven basic ingredients for a seven light traditional seven layer Mexican dip is your refried beans, um, guacamole, sour cream, salsa, some olives, some tomatoes, some green onions for the top. And of course you gotta have some shredded cheese. So to start this out though, I like to do a couple of twists. Um, you can totally leave these options out if you want, or you can be sure to add them and it just adds a little extra kick to the flavor. For my refried beans, I'm just using one can here and I put it into a bowl and I added some taco seasoning, maybe like two tablespoons of taco seasoning and mixed it in to my refried beans. I am using a square baking dish. Um, anything that you can store easily in the fridge that will hold the shape of your taco dip and cover with a lid works great. And we're just going to spoon the beans in to the dish. This is the first layer. And then you just kind of spoon it around so it covers the bottom nicely. If you're looking for some other fun easy recipes for crowds for game day holidays i have a slow cooker hot buffalo chicken dip that's delicious we have uh, crab dip i will link to some of these ideas for you and i also have a playlist like a make ahead play food game day uh potluck type playlist lots of fruit salads that are delicious and healthy and easy to make okay that's in there nicely. And then the second layer of this recipe is guacamole. Well, I personally like to use fresh ripened um, avocados. I like to personally mash them. And then I add lemon juice, probably about one to two tablespoons of lemon juice into my avocados. I have mashed up two avocados, good sized avocados, um, but you can certainly use already made guacamole if you would like to. And 
And then again, you just kind of spread it around. And um, I am going to do what I call a simplified picky eater kid friendly side to this dip because I have one kid that does not like olives. I have a kid that doesn't like the avocados. And so I kind of make corners for them. So I like that about this dip. And then of course my husband likes things spicy. He likes jalapenos and his stuff. So I'll kind of be making this into fours uh, for our family to enjoy. Okay, after the guacamole, we do sour cream and grab a clean spoon here. You just do a nice layer of sour cream on top of your guacamole. And then our fourth layer of this dip is our salsa. And I'm gonna kind of just gently pour it on here and then I'll spread it around. So I used about two thirds of a container of sour cream and maybe three fourths of a jar of salsa. And I don't even need to spoon it. Like it just kind of settles right into place. And then we are going to add our cheese on top. You can use any kind of shredded cheese. I usually use either the taco, the Colby Jack, or sharp cheddar. But I know they have versions out now that are like jalapeno or queso. You could do whatever kind you want. You wanna make sure you get a nice, good, thick layer of cheese because everybody likes cheese. But again, if you are making this for a crowd and you need to do some changes, like maybe you have people who don't want cheese um, or sour cream, you can always do a corner however you want to. So it's kind of a very versatile dip. Here we go. Let's add a little bit more here. And then our last two layers are tomatoes and green onions. Use whatever tomatoes you want, usually Roma. I happen to have cherry grape tomatoes on hand left over from big salads that we made. So I just diced those up. Works pretty well. There we go. And then the last layer is the green onion. Just sprinkle that on top. This is a very pretty dish to make. And I am going to add olives to my side of this dip because I really enjoy olives. Add a few more. And honestly, I think my husband won't mind a couple of olives on his side. He likes those a little bit. And then I'm going to dice up a little bit of jalapeno probably and put that on his side. And we are all set and ready to go to enjoy.
Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Grace. It is the holiday season. Today I am making a really tasty crowd favorite holiday appetizer. We are doing jalapeno popper cheese ball to serve with Tostitos or crackers. And this is just, you know, everybody loves it. So it's a super simple recipe as well. And to start with, we are gonna put two boxes of cream cheese into a large bowl. You're gonna to wanna to get your hand mixer out for this recipe. I'll put all the ingredients and directions in the description below. And we are gonna add two tablespoons of sour cream. Honestly, I am eyeballing it, friends. I'm just going to add some in. It's probably more like three tablespoons, but it's fine. <laughs> and so I've got about a half a teaspoon of onion powder I'm going to add in. Going to get some garlic powder and we're going to add three-fourths of a teaspoon in. You can totally eyeball this too, y'all. It's a little totally fine if you get a little bit more or a little bit less. And then we're going to add in some regular pepper. I'm just going to sprinkle some pepper in. And then we are going to blend this up with our mixer. So I have mixed my cream cheese, sour cream, garlic powder, and onion powder in. If you don't have your hand mixer, that's totally okay. As long as your cream cheese is soft, like at room temperature, it should mix together fairly well for you by using a spoon. I'm gonna grab my shredded cheddar cheese. This recipe calls for a total of two cups. And I'm not even gonna measure, I'm gonna eyeball. about a cup. We're going to mix this in real good. We're going to add in half of our green onion, jalapeno, and crumbled bacon into our cream cheese mixture. You only want to use half of each because you want to save the other half for the outside of your cheese ball. So I have diced up probably about a cup's worth of green onion. And I honestly prefer to use about a third in the mixture and two thirds for the outside to make sure you have enough for the outside. I have about, oh, uh, these pepper um, jalapeno peppers are from my garden. I actually froze some and then thawed them. And these were a little bit on the smaller side. So I had diced up four to five uh, smaller jalapenos. But if you get them from the store and they're fresh, they're usually a little bit bigger. I would go with two jalapenos diced. And my crumbled bacon's about 10 strips or so. And again, you want to make sure you leave enough to cover the outside of your cheese ball. We're going to mix this in by hand. And we are going to take our cream cheese mixture. You kind of want it in a bit of a ball shape. It's going to get a little bit messy. Sometimes you're supposed to get messy in the kitchen anyways. And we're going to get all of this out of the bowl. Going to kind of pat it into a nice little ball. Make it pretty. And then we're going to wrap our saran wrap around it. And we are going to refrigerate this. You can refrigerate this for up to like 10 hours if you want to, or for even a whole day probably. But we're going to refrigerate it for at least a couple of hours. And then right before we're ready to serve it, we are going to combine all of these ingredients into a bowl. Roll our cheese bowl around in there and then put it on our serving platter. All right, my jalapeno popper cheese ball has been chilling in the fridge for a few hours and I have the remaining portion of the crumbled bacon, diced green onions and jalapenos and I've added in the other um, one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, mixed it together and I'm going to go ahead and put it into a nice big bowl. It's mixed together very well and I'm going to unwrap my cream cheese ball. If it's not quite into the perfect ball shape you want it to be in, now is the time to 
fix that. And then we are going to just kind of pop it right into our crumble toppings here. And then you kind of just roll and sprinkle and press those toppings onto the outside of your cheese ball. Go ahead and press them in. Just like that. And she is ready to serve with some delicious crackers or Tostitos. I hope you all liked this appetizer recipe. It'll be a sure hit at your next family get together. Thank you so much for your support, liking and sharing our videos here at In the Kitchen with Grace, and we'll see y'all next time. Sharing a little tip with you all. If you are making a jalapeno popper cheese ball appetizer for your Christmas family get together, you probably have a whole bunch of leftover toppings. The crumpled bacon, green onions, diced jalapenos, and shredded cheddar cheese. Guess what? Save this, put it in a bowl, and use it for breakfast tacos.